Yeah, try to coordinate the scenes this with Johnny. <laughs> Check me out. Remember me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, when they thought I was crazy, I'll let you know. God's got a plan. Yeah. And believe, you better believe. It starts out with a vision, right? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video, Troca CMX. Bienvenidos, chicos y chicas. We're here with my friend Johnny, and uh, today we st we're still at uh, East, Old East Dallas Barbershop. Old East Dallas Barbershop. And, yes, sir. And then we're still sharing the barbershop life and stories. So it'll be nice if you guys stay, stick till the end of the video and then, you know, leave your comment. And we will leave Johnny's social so you can follow him and see more of his story after this video. <laughs> so, Johnny, how you doing today? Good, 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 man. Nice, good. Man. Nice to hear. Really nice to have you here, brother. Pleasure meeting you, Gustavo. Yes, sir. Man. Likewise. It's a blessing. It's an honor to sit in front of this man. He's been through what he's been through, and can't wait to, uh, you know, share what I have to say. Right, right. So, brother, uh, we want to know, you know, like we've been going back and forth with all the barbers, and then. Uh, we want to know your story, you know, how, how long it took you to get here, where you at, anything that you want to share to the public, to your audience, to our fans, you know, that, that way they can get to know you a little more closer. Yeah. And then get to see, you know, what's what's behind the scenes. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> so how long you been doing this? As far as barbering, I can say I have, if not 10, a little over 10 years of experience. Mm -hmm. hands on um, I can say about three to four years of professional experience meaning being in a barbershop so yeah about 10 years man. a long ten way years. to go yeah ten you're years. a senior barber now 32 years old man yeah. still looking like I'm 23 years old that's a good <laughs> thing the numbers. that's what I, uh, I tell the people you know you, you gotta focus on your eating and then that's diet, all it takes diet keep, keep you on young fitness and uh, meditation, better pray, but really, you know, you gotta talk some sense into your mind. Yeah. Your cells listen to you, believe that. Um, so, then, um, here, are you here from Dallas? Like, you've been here the whole time? I or? just moved to Dallas okay. uh, two months ago. Well, February 1st, so. About, like, yeah. Two and a half months. Fresh start, here on a fresh start, and, um, been interesting since came here on a plane flight uh two hundred dollars in my pocket two hundred dollars in my bank account 200 250 ballpark no car no friends no family here it's fresh start you know i came during the uh the ice age yeah you know snowing and icy outside oh yeah. i did not expect that <laughs> i could have yeah. i should i should have stopped to think why they canceled my plane yeah. the day before. You know, I should have checked, but it was interesting. I'm here now, still breathing, I'm still walking, I'm still talking. And making it, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's good. Where are you coming from? Uh? Coming from California. California. Oh, you move out from Cali to here. Fresh start. Coming yeah. from California. I've been in California my whole life. Um, 32. You know, coming from a really, really broken home. Poor family, grew up poor, grew up ghetto. In one of the, like, you know, I could say it was a really bad neighborhood, bad upbringing, you know, drug infested, uh, gang infested, just anything you could think of in the streets, you know, mm -hmm. as bad as it could be for a young individual. You know, parents coming from Cambodia, uh, obviously with no, no resources, grew up really poor. Um, Lost my dad when I was nine. He passed away. Uh, you know, coming up as a kid, you have no guidance. At that yeah. Time. You don't really have any uh, idea on how to become a man. So with any kid that comes up in a hood like that, you kind of lean towards the streets, mm -hmm. lean towards the OGs, you know, that we looked up to, but you really... You know, it's just, as you get older, you start to see who's who, and you start to see who they really were. Yeah. And, you know, they're no good. They're no good. For it's you. easy to get influence. It's, it's exactly. And the peer pressure and just seeking acceptance, seeking validation, trying to be around people and trying to be in a group, you know, instead of trying to stay alone and focus on yourself. Yeah. 
So I grew up, you know, did what I did, been around almost anything you could think of. You know, I've been, I've been, been through the rough. So, uh, you know, at the age of 14, 15, my uh, brother-in-law, you know, Puerto Rican brother-in-law came into my life, met my sister, and seen him cutting hair. And so around that age, I started, you know, seeing things happen, the Clippers. And uh, I noticed that um, it was interesting how they interacted with people. So I've always wanted to just be in that sort of uh, field, in that sort of practice. Mm-hmm. just interacting with people and also serving. And uh, so I started cutting hair at the age of 17. Age of 17, you know, started lining people up for the school dance and the football games, just getting practice, you know, messing everybody up. <laughs> <laughs> messing everybody yeah. up. But it is what it is. You yeah. you know, you, you have to uh, endure and you have to fail in order to uh, get it to the next level and learn and overcome and uh, improve. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I did what I did, started cutting hair, and uh, made made a little bit of money. I thought it was going to be a nice career for myself. I did it all the way up until I was 19, throughout college, you know. It was not what I expected as far as the income. I didn't make as much, so I gave up at the age of 19. Mm -hmm. So I started working. I got into uh, retail sales. Also, uh, illegal sales. Started selling cocaine. Got into the fast life. Turned 21, and that's when it all happened. Started making money fast, more than what I knew what to do with it. I wasn't a drug lord or nothing like that, but you know, I was, I was making it. Growing up poor, yeah, you, wearing hand me downs, yeah, any uh, you know what I mean, used shoes and whatnot. And so it was just, it, it was nice. It was. I, with anybody that gets into this type of lifestyle, you know, you eventually get caught up in fast life. You know, fast money, the faster it comes, the faster it goes. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> at the age of 24, that's when it all started coming down. You know, I went through what I went through, started partying, started doing drugs. I was gone. The devil had the grip. He had the grasp on you know, I didn't know who to turn to. Started losing friends. Started burning bridges. Uh, people stopped believing in me. They started calling me crazy. I was embarrassing myself, doing dumb things. Uh, <laughs> caught a case. Got locked up. Got sentenced to. Uh, they gave they gave me seven years. I completed five. Completed five based on good behavior. Um, it was an interesting journey. Being in prison. You know, uh, thank God I, I knew how to cut hair. I didn't know what I was going to do. Nobody knows what they're going to do being yeah. the first time in prison. It's somewhat scary. You know, but me being from the streets, I was sort of inclined to these type of behaviors and type of environment, mm-hmm. criminals and whatnot. But I looked at them like they're normal. They're just trouble. You know, and, uh, I was able to pick up clippers. And then from then on, I was like, okay, I'm already going to do time. I've already accepted it. I'm not going to stress out anymore. I'm going to cut hair and survive. Get better at this because this is what I'm going to do when I get out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so throughout my whole term, you know, you just cutting. You got to imagine it's prison. All types of people from your drug addicts to, to, to your cat burglars to, you know, sometimes killers. Bosses, workers, all types of people. I got the chance and a blessing to be able to cross paths with, you know, with interesting people, all walks of life, to be able to gain wisdom from these people, Mm -hmm. to be able to, you know, learn from their mistakes. You know what I mean? So that's one of the best wisdom and uh, experience I can get as a barber being in prison. So it was interesting. You know, I was able to find myself, self-discovery. I was able to reflect. You know, I learned a valuable thing about just, not even just with me, but with just humans, to be able to adapt. 
to be able to adapt, no matter what situation you in life, to be able to adapt. People would ask you, how'd you do it? How did you spend over 1,700 nights in prison when people could barely handle one night? Adaptation. Yeah. Accept, you know, embrace the struggle, embrace the circumstance, because it could, it could have been worse. Could have been six feet under. Could have been worse. But, you know, thank God I made it through it. I was able to get fit, get strong mentally, physically, spiritually. I was able to meet some interesting people and uh, did my time and got out. Got better with cutting hair and uh, saved about 500 bucks from doing the slave work the prison system had to offer. Eight cents an hour. Thank God I was I was cutting hair for soups. We're cutting hair for <laughs> soups, tuna, you know, food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, so it's you a, were able to exchange. I was able to maneuver. Yeah. I'm a hustler. Yeah. So I didn't have to sell no dope in there. I was able to sell haircuts to make them look fresh and feel fresh and feel great for their wife to come and check them out. Mm -hmm. So don't piss off your barber if you're in prison, man. <laughs> or the cook. Yeah. Um. I did what I did. You know, it's... It's going to be written in the book, you know, if you guys are, you know, trying to see what's really going on, More what, I, what I really seen and went through, you know, in due time, God's time. Parole, thank God, and um, parole during COVID, 2020, March or April, April 30th, parole. Everybody is going through the pandemic yeah interesting everybody was they, everybody got locked up right everybody had to stay home what is it called the lockdown yeah, you're locked down yeah and, and you were walking out and i was walking out of from being locked down so i'm like yeah. don't threaten me with a good time yeah. i could stay my ass at home as long as i'm free to see my family yeah and the people who showed me love while i was down um uh, how was I going to work? How was I going to get a job? I'm like, the first thing I'm going to do is try to cut some hair. Barbershops are closed. So I caught on. I was like, man, what the hell is going on? What's going on? Oh, everybody's doing house calls. I was like, bet. Barbers are all charging $100, $150, $200 for a house call because nobody was supposed to be moving around. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, fuck that. I just came from making $0.08 cents an hour. $1,200 now. <laughs> now... Shit, you know what? I came out, I'll accept $40. Fuck it. I'm going to run it up, $40. Let my friends know, people who knew other people that wanted cuts. I got 40 Started making an Instagram page, started posting my work. It was okay. My work was okay. You know what I mean? I was still learning because mm -hmm. I was doing prison cuts. Those guys are just okay with whatever it looks like. You know, we, we, had, uh, we had some cheap clippers, you know what I mean? So... Coming home to make forty dollars a haircut, house calls, being able to get back into society, yeah, that way making forty dollars an hour or what you know whatnot for my time, and and to just get reacquainted, you know what I mean. And uh, I was able to stack up nights during the COVID, during the pandemic. Don't try to write me up for this either. So, so I did what I did, you know. 2020 and now it's 2023, right? You know, I was doing pretty good. I was at a Evergreen Barbershop in San Jose, Santa Clara Street. You guys should go check it out. Pretty good barbershop. Friend owned it and uh, shout out Efren. He blessed me with a chair. I was able to cut hair in there. You know what I mean, able to get more clientele. Dude, Silicon Valley, we're making good money. So, did what I did. As you, uh, you know, I'll, I'll admit this. The money got to my head. Oh, yeah. And um, I came up off crypto. Oh, so you jumped, you jumped right on time on the crypto I, thing? I, I bought the Dogecoin. <laughs> I bought the Dogecoin because my coworker at Tesla told me to invest. Because I had 10 grand saved up from cutting hair and hustling and mm -hmm. doing what I was doing. I was selling cologne. I was doing a whole bunch of stuff. Man, I'm a hustler. Yeah. I had 10 grand saved up. I told my coworker, he showed me his portfolio, it was like 350K. Like he's just playing with stocks. Yeah. Working at Tesla, yeah. building computers. Yeah. No, that's what he does on the side, but he was doing production. 
He's like, hey, Johnny, man, put the whole 10 on Dogecoin. Trust me. I'm like, I trust you. So that night I was going to go do it. I'm like, damn, 10 grand? I almost did it. But I decided to make different moves. So I was like, you know what? I just put, put about two. Put two. You know, months go by. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going around preaching to the world. Hey, invest in Dogecoin. Invest in Dogecoin. It's going to blow up. I sound crazy. But as the months started creeping by, bro, you heard about it, right? Yep. I, I jumped right so on you, you So you know what I mean. Yeah. I jumped when it was zero, 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 zero. Yeah. Zero, eight <laughs> Not even a cent. I had it at the eight. Too. So I had about 50,000 coins. About 45, 50,000, 55,000 coins. Yeah. And then what, 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 uh, which month was it that, you know, started spiking uh, up? That was like April. April. April and then May, that's when it like started so going from could, eight cents up and nonstop until. If you could think back to the, the month of April, how was your energy like? <laughs> Bro, I was I was feeling like a god I every mean, day. You had a you had a good amount of coins. Yeah, I oh. I put it. I, I never like to say. Only two friends of mine knows how much I made out of that deal. Um, <clears throat> because you know I have family members and everybody right. like. We don't want you know you know hey. Uh, so I put four grand when it was less than cents. Man. Less than a cent, and I sold at 63. I sold at 70. Yeah. I, I didn't want to wait for uh for that one dollar. For that one dollar in Saturday Night Live bullshit. I'm like, you know what? It's, it's, it's something funny about this. Yeah. So I pulled out, and I came up on a fat amount of cash. So imagine if I, if imagine what I put 10 grand. Yeah. That would have been six figures. Yeah. More. But anyways, me growing up poor, me being in prison, I've never had that much money in my life. It was it was a fat amount of cash in a fat short amount of time, so it was gone before I even touched the money. If that makes sense, yeah, you know what I mean. And so, shit, I could have invested into a barbershop, but instead I went in uh, splurge. I went and did what I did because I wanted to have a little fun. I spent five years of my life in prison. You five have, years. Yeah, you had to recap. The whole you thing. know what I mean. So I was like, you know what. I lost five years. Let me have some fun. Let me let me let me bring my manifestations right now because I've always wanted an S five fifty. So I bought me a 2012 Mercedes S five fifty through 22 inch 4G Auto rims. I thought oh, I was a man, you know. I thought I was a man. <laughs> yeah. So it felt good, man. And so, and you know, long story short, the money the money got to my head. Got back into the fast life. Got try to try to get back into the same route. Started partying with all these, you know, girls. Started started just doing drugs. Started drinking. Started smoking. Felt good, you know what I mean. But what did God just save me from? He just blessed me with a fat bag. Yeah. He trusted me to go and do something great with it, and I almost did, but. Idle time. You got distracted. I got distracted. I thought I had a plan. You know what I mean? I'll admit that. But things don't always go out the way we want it to. And so I burned through all that, took a L, started, uh, you know, being hard on myself, started overworking, started trying to, trying to retain the image. And so, man, it just hit me. 2022, it just hit me. I caught the COVID. Caught the COVID. I was living on my own. Caught the COVID. I was sick for three weeks. I was down. I'm like, damn, bro, this don't feel right. This shit hurts. Um, so I felt like I was in prison again. It's just being stuck at home, just with my me and my mind. And uh just started thinking, like, what the fuck's going on, bro? I'm thinking like, oh, this is coming from the drugs and the alcohol. Like, damn, am I, my body's getting weak again. Am I gonna go back down that path? Yeah. So I decided to just sober up. Like, you know what? Fuck all that. Got my shit together. Uh, I want to say, I got in touch with God again. Truly, started hearing and seeing, started feeling. You know, some sort of awakening. And uh, ever since then, I just been. It's kind of. I, I felt like. I, I feel like. 
just the strength of just letting go, it was hard. But I started letting go little by little. Mm -hmm. Sold the car, the S550. I threw all my jewelry, you know, in the ocean. I was being instructed by something. Yeah. You have that feeling, too. You know what I mean? That, that, that gut feeling. I was being instructed. I'm like, nah, I ain't trying to do this. I ain't trying to let it go. I, I, I worked hard for it. You know, threw it all away. Gave my clothes, designer clothes to a random lady in a laundromat. And uh, I've been on a journey since. You know, it's been about a year and some change. Now I've been on a good path. Truly working on myself, fucking on myself. Got off parole. Thank God. Got off parole. So I was a free butterfly. <laughs> I was free. Yeah. Took off to Vegas. I've always been envisioning Vegas as a, a starting point of my fresh start to mm-hmm. start a new path, a new journey. And, uh, I went to Vegas. It, it didn't work out too well. You know, it, it didn't work out too well. I don't, I don't think it was time. Yet. You know, so I was there for a few months and ended up, you know, sleeping in my car. You know, well, I actually started sleeping in my car before I went to Vegas. And so, but pretty much it's been on and off. Airbnb sleeping in my car. Mm-hmm. So it didn't work out in Vegas and uh ended up taking back off to California for a few weeks just, just to see the family, visit the old yeah. shop to cut some hair to try to raise some money mm-hmm. to do what I gotta do to keep to keep moving. To keep moving forward. Yeah. So you came back from Vegas. So back yeah, to the shop. I, I took off to Vegas. I I, t- I took off from Vegas. I was on this uh this interesting Mission, man, just just sleeping in my car, doing DoorDash, uh, utilizing the gym to take my showers and stay fit and work out. You know, I was moving from city to city, man. I was down in South Cal, California, L.A., Santa Barbara, San Luis Obispo, just moving the cities, just just enjoying my, my me time. Yeah, I was at peace, man. Like I woke up in my car smiling. You know. It's perception, right? And so the goggles that I got on now is great. By the grace of God. I was waking up cool. Making a, I didn't even care about money no more. Just enough to pay for gas and food. I had everything provided for me. Yeah. I've been wearing the same pair of jeans for the past. I've been having, yeah, I've been wearing the same pair of jeans, man, for the past few months. Still wearing the same pair of jeans now. And, um, so I decided, it's like, okay, what's next? What's next? Kept asking. So I'm definitely leaving California. I had to leave my hometown, you know, and definitely the state, just to see something new. Thought about Puerto Rico, you know, just cheaper, weather's beautiful, mm-hmm. women's beautiful. I love Puerto Rican women, by the way. We all do. We all I do. enjoy <laughs> Boricua, Boricua. Their food, bro. Their me food gusta, is me gusta. Me gusta reggaeton también. Yeah. Yeah, I told you I grew up with a brother-in-law. He's Puerto Rican. Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. was inclined to reggaeton since I was 14. Me habla español también. You know, más o menos. But enough to get around, you know. And uh, I, I couldn't do Puerto Rico because I didn't have enough. So I had enough for Dallas. Well, perhaps Texas. I thought about Houston at first, but you know what? Dallas was away from the water. I've been around the water so many times already, so I chose Dallas. Mm-hmm. Got the plane flight, uh, the plane tickets, and uh, my car got repoed back in California, so that, the car that I was sleeping in. So I had nothing. Bad credit, you know, fresh start. Came to Dallas. Like I said, about two to, you know, $250. And I do what I know best at the moment. You know, I know how to cut hair, but instantly you're not going to just get in a barbershop like that. Yeah. So I utilized the money that I had to try and get me a rental car. They got to have Airbnb for a few nights. So it was too damn cold to just sleep outside. Uh, got me a rental car. I had DoorDash. You know, I was able to scrape up some money move around and learn the city so as i was door dashing you know a couple weeks go by you know i, I passed by i got on carroll avenue passed by the shop something told me to stop 
my plan was to save up 10 grand before I get into any barbershop. Yeah. I think it'll be more ideal, especially coming from nothing, having nothing. So that way I don't have to worry about, oh, walk-ins, oh, clientele, this and that. So I had to go. My plan was to work two jobs just to save up some money, you know, put my head down, same clothes, just live on a minimum, just stack up. So I walked into the barbershop, met Jay. You know, you talk to yeah. Jay already. Yeah. Cool dude. Really good heart. Showed him my work. He was like, come on, bro. Come, We got you. You're good. You're already in here. I'm going to talk to the owner. I'm like, you sure? He's like, yeah. Then to me, I'm not going to second guess myself. I had the skill and talent to, to survive, but I wanted to make some more money just to be safe. But something told me to take a leap of faith, mm -hmm. you know, as we know it. Just believe and have faith. Walk by faith and not by sight. Got in the shop, still DoorDash, and I've been there since. Started about a week, and probably about six weeks ago, seven weeks ago. I've been surviving. I've been, I've been slow times, busy times, cutting as much as I can, building up clientele now. Just the way I visualized it. Mm -hmm. For any any good barbers, is gonna come up. Yeah. Good haircuts, you know what I mean. And uh, been there since, you know. Been trying to juggle part time jobs and. Full-time job here and there. Hopefully, I get this uh, server job at you know happiest hour. I heard that's a pretty good gig. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm I'm inclined to the nightlife. Yeah. You know what I mean. So I, I want to be around the nightlife while I'm cutting hair, and I get to meet other people, great people. Yeah. And, uh, grow your network. Grow my network. Brand new city. No. No support, but me, God, and uh. The the, the blessings of of having these guys around me. Everybody at this barbershop, cool as fuck. Edgar, cool as fuck. Showing love. The man that's inside, showing me love, allowing me to sleep in the barbershop. I've been sleeping in a car in the barbershop. I still don't have a home. I don't have a car. But thank God I've been stacking some chips. I got, I got some money. You know, st still need a couple more weeks, few more weeks to get me a car. And I don't think I'm going to get a place yet because I do want to visit California the first week of May to go visit my family and enjoy a little bit of Cinco de Mayo in San Jose. Yeah. But, yeah, man, everything is, is good. Every, anywhere I go, anywhere I go in life, I'm going to be good. As long as it's not in a prison cell, laying on a rack. No matter how hard life gets, it could always be worse. There are people inside prison that are never going to see their family, that are never going to see their wife or be with their wife at home peacefully ever again. Stuck inside. Yeah. So every day I wake up, grateful. I wake up in my car, happy as fuck. I'm about to go work out. I don't talk to nobody in the gym. I become a ninja when I enter the gym. When I get past the desk, it's all only you and the way. Close mouth. I don't even get clientele from the gym. I don't need them to know what the fuck I got going on. Yeah. It's there for me to maintain my peace of mind. Because fitness and health is very important and very serious. I don't go there to socialize. I go there to make sure I stay strong enough. I got asthma, bro. Yeah. I don't like to say that anymore. I threw away my inhaler in prison. I don't believe in that shit. I got bad lungs, so I have to be in the gym just to maintain. Yeah. I have to. And it's good for your mind, body, and soul. And it's going to make you feel good and it's going to make you look good. When you feel good and you look good, you attract more good. You focus more, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? We'll, yeah. And um, we, as men, all have things to work on. Every day, you know, I meet other men cutting their hair. Whatever areas in life they need help, and I help as much as I can. <clears throat> I'm not no Andrew Tate. I don't want to be Andrew Tate. He's yeah. a great man. Yeah. I'm a great man, too. God's going to make all of us great as long as we believe in ourselves. It takes time. Build. The Great Wall of China wasn't built overnight, right? Yeah, you're right. So. We, we all have or little Look at part. you. We all have a little part there. Look so. at you. <laughs> I'm, you got a big following. People yeah. paying attention. People watching your moves. You know what I mean? You, yeah. you started somewhere. And that's going to inspire me and everybody else that watches you like, 
it's, it's beating down the walls of the obstacles in your dream and vision. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a day at a time. I still procrastinate. You know, I want to be a big DJ. I'm still procrastinating on, on practicing. You know, God, you know, thank God I got the hustle to get it. So I'm here now, focus, no distractions, no girl, no friends, no parties, nothing. Just just me, myself, and I and God. And all the good vibes and all the good heartedly people and whatnot. You know what I mean? It's 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 up from here. You know, I came from where I came from. You guys I already told you guys that. And every day, you got to be able to wake up and do what you got to do, no matter how you fucking feel. Everybody's gone through something. We're men. We have to build and conquer within our own world. Because the vision God blessed us, bless us right. with, only we can see it. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can. Yeah. They're going to think you're crazy. Only you seen yeah. what this was, and look what you did, brought it to life. Yeah. So keep working on your vision. I'm going to keep working on mine. It's a big one. So that's I'm excited, a day at a time, a day at a time. You know, entrepreneurship, whatever the case may be, I, I would love to just be able to come up and make other people's dreams come true. Come true. That's that's my that's my goal, man. It's it's, it's there's no. Interest I'm, I'm in not that. going to get rich. I am rich. Yeah. Money is just a piece of paper that's just going to be a byproduct of the hard work and the positivity that we bring to this world to change people's lives. That's going to come. Yeah. To be you know, right in the music field too, just to make people dance. The beautiful Latinas move their hips. You know, I I love seeing people enjoy. Themselves. Yeah. Fuck the fame. Fuck the money. I could make money. It may not be a million dollars an hour, but shit. It ain't zero dollars an hour. For the rest of for the rest of the days in my life till the day I die, I will never be broke as long as I can cut hair. Take this motherfucking craft anywhere in the world. Yeah. I don't have to know your language. Okay. I could just look at you, show you some pictures. You show me some pictures. Oh, you want this? Okay. I gather up all the 10 cool guys in, in the city. I don't even know. Get them free haircuts and just send them off. They're going to bring me some customers. Back. Yeah. I ain't going to say too much, man. You know, because I know there's going to be a lot more. You know, if you guys want to hear some more. Um, we can have a part two. Part two or whatever. Yeah. And I started a new Instagram page. You know, I deleted my old one. I had I had a good following. I had about a thousand followers. I was getting the attention that, you know, that was yeah. from the hard work I was putting in. I didn't care. I don't care about social media. I don't care about social validation. I don't care about a set. I don't care about none of that. Yeah. I can just the way I got out of prison for five years and did all that, I could do it again. I'm not gonna be enslaved to that. Yeah. So I started a new page. Uh Johnny Styles, Johnny underscore Styles, J O H N N I I underscore S T Y L E Z. Just, you know, pictures of my haircuts. I got little workout videos in there. Now that the world has some sort of attention, you know, like, mm. or now that I got a little bit of attention, yeah. some people might want to, uh, you know, follow me. They like to dive and then just and like, what people the, are what curious. What the heck is this guy really about? <laughs> he only has sixty four followers. Who, who does he think he is? Yeah, somebody great. You better yeah. believe you great too. Yeah. Um, go ahead and follow me. And uh, little by little, I'll post things here and there. Because now I'm gonna take advantage of YouTube. I'm gonna start my own little YouTube channel. Yeah. Already got one. It's just it's still you know still posting random videos. I talk a lot of shit on my Instagram anyways, uh, you know, just before. <laughs> People know. Yeah. People know. I'm, I'm that, you know, our big visions that we had, people thought we were crazy, right? Yeah. Nobody will understand. You it. know what I mean? Nobody Only don't. you and God. Yeah. So chase that bag and paint your picture. Because your picture is great and beautiful. Because I know you smile at home when you visualize the things that you dream of. When you're driving a car, whenever you're sitting down. Listening to music, like, damn, that's me. That's me, the best version of yourself. 
you see the best version of yourself every day. And if not, you better learn to. Because everybody is destined for greatness. No matter where you come from, what you look like, you know, and what you did in life. Everybody is destined for greatness. And it takes, it takes self-discovery. When you spend time with thyself, you learn thyself. You study thyself, then you become thyself. Yeah. And now you show thyself. Don't be anybody else in this world but yourself. When you look in the mirror, you all you really got. And we all have a unique mission here. All of us. Yeah. Don't hate on another man. We don't have a hate bone in us. This is positive vibes. It's too much energy to hate on another man. Man, when you can do the same, if not better, become the best version of yourself. You know what I mean? It's um, it's, it's too much money out there. It's too many... I'm going to say there's too many women out there. Because yeah. most of the competition for men is just, oh, trying to get all the women, trying to get the best women. It's a big-ass world out there. Any men that's going through heartbreaks, it's a big-ass fucking sea of fishes out there. Yeah. And it's, one thing I learned, you know, from that, cause I can say I've been on some places where you've been to. I learned that um, whenever you ambition somebody else's... Uh, materialistic stuff or whatever they have right you chase it and then you figure out it's not for you it's not you you, you like what it looks like I like how you brought that up you, you like what it looks like but once it once you're there it's yeah. like nah this See, is not for me great minds think alike man i'm glad so. you brought that up dude it's just what's meant for you is only for you what yes. works for one man is not going to work for another right you know it's i'm glad you brought that up yeah so ladies and gentlemen Thank you for watching, and I hope you like this video and the story. I'm hoping to have a, a part two with you. <laughs> you know, I'm hoping to, like I told everybody. Probably at a rooftop. rooftop my, yeah, yeah, yeah. We could do that. I can, you know I, I mean? can, I, I'll work my way up to to get there one day. You know, yeah. so we can do any building in Dallas. <laughs> Gustavo, man, so, it's such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Man. I, it's, it means a lot to me. I don't know you. You don't even know who the heck I am. Yeah. Not, now you do. Yeah. For the most part, but. You taking the time out of your day to come and bless us with this type of, uh, you know, exposure. Some type of, you know, just to be able to, an outlet, just yeah. to be able to share. You know, I don't care who's watching. As long as you come in from greatness and you did what you did that you thought was great, and it is great. Just to be able to share with you is a blessing. I thank you. God bless you, sir. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Yeah. Uh. I can okay, get used to this. I can yeah, get yeah. used to this, man. Well, uh, like I said, you know, I tell everybody, my house is your house, and then I hope to see Mi you casa here. Casa es su yeah. casa. Yeah. I hope to see you here for part two, uh, part three, as many <laughs> as it takes. I so, mean. Great you know, stories that you have behind your life. Anything, so, anything, we're looking you know, like it. anything you want to know, anything we can collab on and yeah. discuss. You know, it doesn't even have to be about my life. It could be yeah, about yeah, yeah. life's problem, life today's sure. situation. Yeah. Any, anything, you know, because your viewers appreciate your work and what you do. So they're going to appreciate creative energy. Yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you have a good night, and then I'll see you next. People, thank you for watching, and thank you to everybody that stick to the end of the video. Um, we hope you guys learn something, you know, from, from this story. And if you like the story, please leave a comment, and then follow my boy at his social medias we're gonna leave him here below and as i always say you know it's a wake-up call today so damn catch good. up catch up we'll see you in the next one <laughs>